Hello, thank you for joining me. So in this film, our third film in our series, How to Build a Spring and How to Put That Spring in an Assembly, so that uh, the assembly has the ability to modify the spring as components in an assembly move, uh, I like to show you some uh, additional steps that I'm going to use to help uh, provide a little bit more realism to the spring. First thing uh, I'm going to do, and probably the last thing I'm going to do to the spring for now, and we'll go through uh, variable pitch springs here in a bit, probably in a different video. But what I'd like to do is kind of truncate the top of the spring, the, low, uh, the bottom of the spring a little bit to provide us with a flat surface and to emulate a little bit better how springs are really put together. So let's do this. Uh, I'm going to go, uh, go to the front sketch, or front plane, and go to the sketch element. What we're going to do is we're going to do a corner rectangle and just kind of draw it out here like that. I'm going to click on the origin, click on this line, and pick midpoint. I'm going to probably put a dimension on this thing like, uh, I don't know, maybe four inches would be good. And on the top here, I'm going to go ahead and click on that edge and our point and make those coincident. So if we go ahead and rebuild this, uh, the spring still has the ability to move up and down depending on how we uh, move that uh, center line. So the sketch that follows it will come with it. But what we're going to be doing with sketch 5 is we're going to go to features, we're going to do the extruded cut, we're going to flip to the outside of that cut, and we're going to make a through wall in one direction, through a wall in the second direction. And what it does is it provides a flat area on top of the spring. So the spring still has the ability through that sketch to be able to move up and down and uh, regenerate itself. So there's our spring. Let's insert that into an assembly. And uh, a lot of my students are familiar with my Saros mechanism. We're going to go ahead and put that in here. I have sketches turned on. and turn on the sketches on our Saros mechanism too so we can actually identify some points in here that we, we can use for our spring. So let's go ahead and elongate that a little bit. Let's take our spring and maybe that flat edge, but we know that uh, on that flat edge uh, for that spring is going to be the top plane. So let's make that top plane and perhaps this area in here. We'll make that. Uh, we'll make that together. And we'll also take this point or this line. Let's take this arc and maybe that arc and do a, a mate there, and we're going to make that uh, concentric. So now our Saros mechanism has the ability to move up and down. Our spring does not. If we click on that, it's not going to allow us to move it. It's uh, you know, able to uh, rotate a little bit. And we can uh, as, you know, probably define that a little bit better. In fact, let's go ahead and do that while we're here. Just uh, to make sure that the only motion we have left in the spring is uh, the compression or the elongation of the spring. So we can take perhaps the front plane of the spring front plane of the assembly made those together and now we're not going to we're not going to do a concentric or a coincident mate let's do a parallel mate and then go to the green check mark so the only motion we have left is the spring itself now since it's fully uh, defined here so we can't really work on that but what we can do is we can take that line we can double click on it or uh, if you go to over here to edit component if you click in the component itself and go to edit component what we're going to do is we're going to establish an in context relationship between this point we're going to move that down just a little bit. Between that point and a point that's exterior to the spring, but part of uh, the Saros mechanism. So we're going to pick this point, which is the center of that circle, and uh, the point on top of that line, which defines uh, the length of that spring, and we're going to make those points uh, coincident with each other. So let's double click on that so we can get into that sketch element. So now we're editing this part within context of the assembly. So we're in the sketch one, so we're going to click on the end point of that sketch element. It's thinking. And we're going to click on that point, and we're going to make those coincident with each other. So you can see that coincident relationship in here. And then when we rebuild it, spring or rebuild, exit edit component, now we have it out there. So let's go ahead and hide some of these sketches. Hide that sketch, I'll hide this sketch. Uh, let's just go up here and uh, hide all sketches for now. So now, if we take our uh, Saros mechanism and give that thing a spin, now the spring doesn't update real time, but if we go to rebuild, it'll update every time we turn that. Now the spring will follow our uh, assembly. So we can put it at its minimum down here. The spring will almost be fully compressed. Put it at its maximum. Of course, we could always stretch out this spring until it's almost linear in nature, but uh, that kind of gives you an idea of what we're looking at here. 
And that's kind of how you, uh, you know, put a spring into an assembly and have the spring adjust itself in the assembly. But the key here is to have that reference geometry in the spring, which is that line that goes right up down, uh, right up the middle. And then to um, uh, establish uh, an in-context relationship between the end of that line by going into the edit component portion of that. If you show that line, we want to make sure we go to views, uh, turn on sketches. We also want to turn on this sketch too. It's going to be our sketch uh, down there. It's going to be our sketch too. It shows you that sketch. We want to be able to turn that on and make a, an in-context relationship with that point. You can see that in-context relationship here. It just shows it as a coincident relationship. But you can also see the symbol down here. It's a dash and then uh, kind of a, a greater sign down here. That means there's an in-context relationship there. Because that sketch has got it, the sweep has got it, and eventually the up here you'll see it on the, on the component, as, uh, the part that's within the assembly. So that's that. If you, there's a desire to see this as an animation so it updates uh, real time as we're uh, going through this, I can do that. I'm intending to do that as a video here in the coming weeks. But uh, for now, this is where we're going to leave it, and we will see you in class.